stop walking on the Constitution. Instead, we're trampling on the federal regulation code today. That's great. Folks, I got so excited at that speech, I forgot to get my stuff ready here. Our next speaker is, uh, and we're going to move right on because we're going to get you out of here by 2 o'clock, like we said. So we've got about, uh, well, we, we're going to try. <laughs> got about 10 minutes. We're going to have to move. But our next uh, our next speaker, we got two left, and and uh, the next speaker is comes uh, to us from the field of fundraising. Um, Paul Ransdell has been a fundraising professional for over 22 years. You know what I like about these events is we've got people coming from every different walk of life and sector that really love our country and really want to see things change. So Paul, uh, without further ado, you can uh, come onto the platform. Paul has served in a variety of uh, so many different things that I could begin to mention them all. He might want to mention one or two. But uh, thanks for coming today, Paul, and uh, joining us here on the platform. I'm going to fight with this sound system a little bit, if you'll bear with me. I've got a few things I'd like to say, and I'm happy to be here to, to say it with you and to speak with you. I'm a two-handed speaker, so this is going to be a challenge for me. i got to tell you, it's uh, I've heard everybody who has ever followed Gatewood complain about how unfair and uh, and undesirable it is to follow Gatewood, but I'm, I'm here to tell you today I'm proud to do it. That's the last free man in America. And in fact, last week I got the last free book in America. Gatewood, thank you. I appreciate your book and I'm looking forward to reading it. This is a beautiful day in Lexington, Kentucky, and it's a beautiful day in America. Would you agree with me? Yeah. I like to say when I stand in front of groups, that I wear the title of conservative proudly. And I wonder if we have any conservatives in the group today. Yeah! In 1980, Ronald Reagan carved out a home for modern conservatives who followed him across party lines and into the Republican Party. My own mother was one of those Reagan devotees, a lifelong Democrat who saw herself in the mirror of conservative expression and made her way to a new party and I followed her. But from 1994 to 2009, that very same Republican Party has turned its back on conservatives. And then that party took its seat at the liberal socialist table with its comrades across the party aisle. I am, if nothing else, an American conservative, and I perceive we American conservatives to be a movement without a party. And while we know ours is an uphill climb, while we would seem to perceive the two-party system to have the upper hand, I say that it is not so. I say we are right that private property is freedom, and that freedom is the right to my own private property. Yes, sir. I say that they are wrong, that wealth redistribution and all other attempts at leveling always lead to stagnation every time. Yes, sir. I say that we are right, that government does the most harm whenever it tries to provide or deliver a service, whatever that service might be. And I say that they are wrong, that after all, the government has no business doing for people what they can and should rightfully do for themselves. No matter how hard that is, no matter how daunting it feels, and no matter how unfair it seems. I believe we don't need no stinking fairness doctrine. I say we are right that untold generations of our grandchildren are far too important than to sell them out and to set them up against the demands of foreign investors who one day will come to collect their due. I say that they are wrong. They are not leaders. They are oligarchs. For the real leaders, ladies and gentlemen, are standing to your right and they're standing to your left. Yeah. 
The real leaders are not in Washington, D.C., and they are not in Frankfurt. They are right in front of you, and they are amongst you right here today. And I say that in 2010, we need some real leaders. What do you say? Yes, sir. I'm here to tell you that my son, my seven-year-old son is a 13th generation American. His ancestors were among the first settlers, forging out a vast, forging a, a nation out of a vast raw wilderness some 140 years before the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And my son and I are proud Kentuckians, a sovereign commonwealth since 1792, itself carved from the Virginia frontier. And in the words of our brother Kentuckian Jesse Stewart, Kentucky is my land. It is a place beneath the wind and sun in the vast, in the very heart of America, a land of even tempo, and a land that has kept its traditions of horse racing, of ballad, of song, of folk music, and of story. It has held steadfast to its pioneer tradition of fighting men fighting for America and for the soil of Kentucky. I take with me, embedded in my brain and my heart, in my flesh, in my bone, in my blood. Since I am of Kentucky, and Kentucky is a part of me. Well, brothers and sisters, our beloved Kentucky allows itself year in and year out to be bought and sold on the bartering block of federal earmarks, federal set-asides, federal pork barrel spending, and federal mandates. Our Kentucky has forgotten that it is from the states that the federal government derives its power, the power of consent by the people who populate these 50 states. Yes. Our Kentucky has forgotten who it is. It has forgotten because we have forgotten. Our legislators have forgotten. So today, we remind them. We remind them that we are not serfs. We are not pawns. We are not peasants. Yes, sir. No, we are each and every one of us sovereign in the eyes of God. Yes, sir. And we are equal under a just law. If you are a Kentucky legislator today, we say, don't tread on me. Yes, sir. If you are a state government employee today, we say, don't tread on me. Yes, sir. If you are a county official or a county government employee today, we say, say it with me, don't tread on me. If you are a city official or a city government employee, today we say, don't tread on me. If you are a federal bureaucrat or a love child of the federal dole, today we say, don't tread on me. If you cloister in the offices and corridors of some state agency, a timid soul who knows not the joys and sorrows that are part, of, part and parcel with job creation or wealth creation, or opportunity creation, today I say, come out of the shadows. Come out and join the men and women who carry your load. Come out and join them and shoulder some of this dead weight. Stand along with us, and if you cannot, if you will not, then today we say, don't tread on me. They are the dead weight. Two seconds. We find ourselves at a crossroads in American history perhaps the single greatest crossroads of most of our lifetimes. Whether to tumble headlong down into the dark, dank valley of socialism and state ownership of every resource, whether it's financial or natural or human, yeah. or whether to take, once and for all, a mighty stand. Stand firm, brothers and sisters, stand firm. Do not be dismayed, do not be afraid. Stand firm, stand against them. This is a battle that we can take. This is a battle we can win. It is my pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. God bless you. Everybody say it. Don't tread on me. Oh, let them hear you down there at City Hall. You can do better than that. I heard this plan for term limits. I wanted to know what you think about it. Here, hold on, here's the plan. It's a different kind of term limit. Limit Congress to two terms, one in office and one in jail. <laughs> <laughs>